Hello, Engineering Central. This is Mr. Bradshaw, Mr. B, and I am going to be talking to you today in this brief lesson about speed and torque, two really, 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 really important concepts in engineering, whether it be mechanical, mechanical engineering, mechatronics engineering, robotics engineering. You need to know how to use both of these concepts and understand these concepts and use them to your advantage. Everybody's heard about speed. You've all traveled on a highway, traveled in the city, so you know that um, highway speeds are faster than city speeds, but defining speed's a little bit more difficult. And then torque might be a new concept for many of you. So the learning goals for this lesson are to understand what speed and torque are, and to explain their relationship to each other. So when we talk about mechanical engineering, what are we actually studying? It's the study of bodies in motion. Really, it is a practical application of what you learn in physics class, quite often anyway. It's the physics of bodies under the influence of force. It's one of the reasons why I love engineering. It makes physics and, and other subjects come alive. Physics and math come alive because this is a, a practical application. You're seeing what you can do with the knowledge that you gain in some of those other classes. So mechanical engineering is the study of bodies in motion, in particular under the influence of force. And um, these aspects, the, the mechanical aspects of mechatronics and robotics are really, really heavily tied to the principles of me mechanical engineering. So mechanical engineering is just one of those disciplines that you can study in university. It's quite large um, and you can go in lots of different directions with it. As I say, from me mechatronics and robotics engineering to mechanical engineering, which is designing systems, um, aerospace even. Um, those are all under the umbrella of mechanical engineering. Okay, this gets us to speed, which is a familiar concept, but it might be a little bit more difficult to pinpoint. So you've all experienced varying levels of speed in cars or on bicycles or running or anything like that. It's a measure of how fast an object is moving. But in particular, speed describes a change in position with time. So how far does an object move over a given period of time? So if I'm measuring, if I'm gonna do a speed trial between a transport truck and a Ferrari, both of them have similar horsepower, so it should be an interesting competition, should be an interesting race, because they have to have the same horsepower, right? So that, so that that seems logical, they should tie. But what you're going to find is that the Ferrari is going to beat the transport truck, hands down, in a speed trial, because I'm going to measure over four seconds. So over those four seconds, how far is the Ferrari going to travel? And then compare that to how far the transport truck will travel. Well, in that four seconds, the Ferrari is probably going to travel two or three or four times further than the, did I just say the transport truck? The Ferrari is going to travel two, three or four times farther than that transport truck, which indicates that it has more speed. So it's measured in things like miles per hour or feet per second. So it's always in units of distance per time. And this is universally recognized. In Canada, of course, we're using kilometers per hour or centimeters or even meters per second when we talk about robotics. Now we all know what speed is, but rotational speed is maybe a little bit different. You might not have thought too much about this unless you really love cars or things like that. Rotational speed is another measurement of speed, but it's not surprisingly rotationally. So something that's moving around a circle. So rotational speed is really how fast something is moving in a circle or in a circular pattern. Why is this important? Well, motors, for example, motors are measured. Their speed is measured through rotational speed. And this is also universally recognized and it's typically measured in things like angular distance per time. So for example, degrees per second or rotational cycles like revolutions per minute. That's probably more common. You've probably heard of an engine, an engine's RPM. So for example, if you've got a sports car that you like to rev up to 7,500 RPM, what you're doing is you're revving that engine, making it spin 7,500 revolutions per minute. So that's pretty, pretty fast. So when you're referencing a motor, whether it be a car motor or a little DC motor, like what we'll run our robotics with, or even a little servo motor, we can talk about the rotational speed. And the rotational speed, if you transfer that through an axle, for example, to a wheel, then the rotational, a faster rotational speed should translate to a faster linear speed. Okay, acceleration is another really familiar term. Acceleration is a change in speed over a period of time. So the higher the acceleration, the faster the change in speed. 
If I use the same example of the Ferrari in the pickup truck, clearly the Ferrari has a height. Well, not surprisingly, the Ferrari will have a higher acceleration. In four seconds, it will change its speed from standing still to moving 100 kilometers an hour, perhaps. Whereas the transport truck, in the same amount of time, would only move from zero, from standing still, to perhaps 40 kilometers an hour. So the higher acceleration is the one that moves the farthest distance in that amount of time, or that, that increases in speed, at least, in the same amount of time. And since acceleration is a rate of change of speed, if you have no acceleration, it means that you have no change in speed. So it means that you're either standing still or you're not accelerating. You have the cruise control going and you're, op you're, you're traveling at exactly the same speed. No acceleration means no change in speed. Okay, this might be a little bit new for some of you, the force. Um, it matters because accelerations are caused by forces. So a force is an influence that causes a change of movement, direction, or shape. So when you press on an object, you're exerting a force on it. And so when it moves, it's moving or accelerating because of the force that you exerted on it. When a robot is accelerating, it does so because of the force its wheels are exerting on the floor. So without any force on the wheels, the robot might have great rotational speed, but it's not actually going to have any linear speed because there's no force being exerted on the floor. Force is also universally measured or recognized and it's measured in units such as pounds or newtons. So, and I've already given an example, but another one might be the weight of an object is the force on that object due to gravity. So the heavier an object, the faster it'll accelerate towards the center of the earth. Okay, now for the other big one. So you know what speed is, you know all sorts of different types of speed, but now let's talk about torque. So torque might be a familiar term if you've ever watched a pickup truck commercial, they talk about all the torque and all the payload that this motor can pull or haul behind it. So, but what is torque really? Because you're gonna have to understand this. You'll, you'll need to use, you'll need to, to balance your desire for speed and your desire for torque. Depending on the specifications that you need to build a robot for, you need to, to understand how to make use of torque. And torque is force directed in a circle. So torque is a spinning force. So the high, the, so a, a motor that's spinning has a particular uh, set or a particular speed that is rotating, a rotational speed. It will also have a torque, and that torque is the linear force or the the, the rotational force that's being exerted at the e outer edge of that wheel or gear or whatever object you've got attached to your motor. So if the torque is spinning an object, the object will create a linear force at its edge. So you can imagine that as the edge of the tire. Where the tire contacts the ground, there's force at the edge of the tire. That's caused because of the torque, the spinning rotation of the motor. So the torque definition is a linear force at the edge of a circle. And it's measured in units of force times distance. So this is inch pounds or newton meters. Now this is... Now here is a pretty cool a very important relationship between speed and torque. You can build a robot for speed, or you can build a robot for torque, but it's pretty hard to build a robot for both, at least not with mechanical advantage, which we're gonna discuss later. But rotational speed and torque are actually inverse. So the more torque, the less speed, the more speed, the less torque. So for a really simplistic example of this, think of the transport truck and the Ferrari. Both of them have a similar amount of horsepower, but they're both geared very, very differently so that the, the Ferrari can go very, very fast. It's got high speed, but you'd be hard pressed to pull a camping trailer behind it. Whereas the transport truck with a similar amount of horsepower can't go very fast, but it can haul a big load behind it. So more torque, less speed, more speed, less torque. So they're inversely proportional. This is really, really important. Now in class, what we have done or what we will do is experiment with this, experiment with different gear configurations. So to see the relationship between speed and torque, I, we are going to build um, basic driving bases um, upon which we can add a driving gear and a driven gear. And if the driving gear is the small gear and the driven gear is the big gear, you're gonna see how that affects the speed and how that affects the torque. And then you reverse the motor so that the, the large gear is the driven gear 
and the small gear is the driving gear and see how that affects the speed and the torque. And what you should see is that they're completely inversely proportional. So speed and torque, two really, really important concepts in mechanical, mechatronics, robotics engineering.